Good morning. So this morning I'm in Bear Woods uh, photographing some flowers and I had alluded on some social media posts that uh, about focus peaking and how I really love it to do macro work. So I wanted to take a second, like I promised, and do a video to sort of demonstrate how I use that. Uh, this morning I'm using my Sony a7R 3 and every camera is going to differ a little bit, but the majority of the mirrorless cameras, which I love to do the, the macro work with, um, will have focus peaking in manual focus and it's simply uh, adjusting your focus until the outer edge of the flower uh, illuminates in some particular color you can choose white yellow red in this case i always choose red it's easier for me to see uh, you can use it just simply on a tripod which i've got it set up on a tripod right now to, to demonstrate it but then i'll show you handheld how i move in and out and when I see the red on the part that I want to be sharp, that's when I'll release the shutter. So if you want to find out how to do it on your individual cameras, um, there's some book that they send with the camera when you buy it. I think it's called an instruction manual. Um, I don't ever read them, but you know, sometimes I look up on YouTube how to operate the camera. Every once in a while, I'll peek at some, some videos and some other stuff as to how to actually do it. So if you're one of these people that know how to use an instruction manual, I would recommend using your instruction manual to determine how to use the peak uh, focusing or focus peaking, excuse me, on your individual camera. So let's go ahead and take a look and I'll show you how it operates. Okay, so I've got a very high tech setup here. I've just simply got one camera looking at the back of the other camera. Um, you can't show the focus peaking when you're using a video. It'll show it as you're setting up, but it won't show it as you're actually doing the video. So I'm looking at a couple of zinnias in the backyard and you can see it's out of focus. And as I, oh boy, that's what happens when you don't move it enough. Um, so as I start to focus in, you can actually see the red tips of the yellow flowers. They're very fine. I'll try to find something that's even bigger in a second. But that's how the focus peaking works. And it simply will show you at your chosen depth of field what is going to be in focus. Um, if I were to move it down, you could start to see the stems down in the, in the foreground uh, or the underneath the flower. You can see just a little bit of red right here. Um, and I'll take a look at something else here in a second. But what I simply do is I will use the focus peaking. You can really see it real well right there right now. I'll use the focus peaking to uh, go ahead and, and get my exposure, uh, my focusing set up. I've got my exposure ready. Do an image and we'll include that one as well. Uh, but that's the basic part of it. Let me see if I can find another example that shows it even better here. So hang on just a second. So again, here's this really high-tech setup, and I found a bud that it actually shows up on really well. So as I turn my focus in, you can really start to see the, the red on the tip, then it moves to the front, um, and just simply let you know when it's in focus or out of focus. And there's the focus peaking right there. I want it to be a little bit closer in my final image, so I'm going to put it onto the front area of the flower right there. Let me see if I can zoom in and give you a better idea. Uh, no, it's not going to zoom in for me. Okay, let me go ahead and do an image and I'll include that as well. So now what I want to do is just give you a demonstration on how I'm doing it while I'm hand holding. And I simply just predetermine, I, I get an idea of what I want to be in focus and I'll move the camera in and out and I turn the screen to a point where when that focus peaking comes on, uh, that's when I release the shutter. So let me go ahead and set that up for you. Okay, so I'm going to be photographing this flower uh, in particular, and um, I've tried to set the camera up to that, that point. So what I'll do in my camera, though, is I've turned on the vibration compensation because I am going to be hand-holding it. Um, you can see on the lens, I'm using the Tamron 90mm macro lens, uh, the f2.8. I'm photographing right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrow my depth of field just a little bit. Um, I'm going to go down to f4. I'm in manual mode. Let me get my meter reading set up. So at 1 250 of the second at f4, um, and I'm going to photograph the top of the flower first and demonstrate for you how the, the uh, mode works. Um, I simply will, will turn my screen up a little bit so it's easier for me to view it. So you can see I've got it at an angle. 
and then I will simply move in. Let me move my focus out a little bit. When it's sharp, I get those focus peaking points, and I release the shutter, get a better angle here. So in one point on the, the videos that I, or the images that I shared, I was photographing from underneath. So up above is not as difficult to photograph, but when you're at an angle that's beneath the flower, you simply turn your screen up so you can see it a little bit better. And then moving in and out to get that nice little focus peaking. Get it to the point where the focus peaking turns red. So you have to be careful because I have found that a couple times I'll get so involved in, in bending down and taking a picture and I'm trying to hold my breath to minimize any movement or anything else because moving in and out, uh, you get that, uh, it's easy to get in and out of focus if you're using a shallow depth of field, which I'm using here. So I find myself almost getting lightheaded a couple times. So just caution, uh, be careful when you're doing this, you're bending over, you're holding your breath, you stand up, you're gonna get lightheaded if you're not careful. I do it all the time. So what I did here, and I'm gonna try to demonstrate here real quick, sorry for the glare and the reflections, went into my menu, my focus peaking settings, I found that it was actually easier right now to work with uh, white focus peaking versus the red or the yellow. So I went ahead and I stuck with the, went to the white. And now you can see as I start to focus in, you can now really see those little white areas that are the in focus areas there from the focus peaking. That's a good example there. That's what I would definitely want to be the sharpest in that image. Let me turn my VC off. I'm on a tripod. Again, I love this 90 macro. It's just so incredibly sharp. And then when I go back to the playback, you can see, let's see just how sharp this is down in that area, that foreground area. I'm using a very shallow depth of field. Uh, let's, let's see if we can step up our depth of field and see if it makes a difference. Uh, let's go with my um, aperture first, then we'll, we'll come in and we'll do shutter speed. Now you can see how I get more and more of it in focus. I'm even going to go further because I think it's compressed enough that I think I can get a good bit in focus and not worry about that background. All right, now let's do one image like this. Start to get busy background in that one. Um, but it does, does definitely give me more in focus in the flower itself. You can see the detail that's really nice fades out towards the back of the flower. But I get some beautiful detail in that foreground. So. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to take a few more images and I'll share them with you as well. But again, it's a, it's a great way to get out and ensure that your images are going to be sharp um, without having to get down on the ground, get back up and everything else and get at weird angles. This just makes it a lot easier. I'm a control freak when it comes to focus and macro. So that's what I like to do. And hopefully that helps. If not, I can try to do something to further explain it. Um, again, if you like the video at the end, give it a good thumbs up. And if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channels, please subscribe. Um, every little bit helps. Thank you very much. Have a good day.